Hey, happy Friday. Extra happy Friday, right? Because it's Friday before fall break. Hey, how many people are going home for fall break? Nice. How many people are staying here? Yeah, you know, um, I went to Hope, and a couple years after going home for fall break, which is really far because I'm from Holland, it dawned on me that actually staying for fall break is pretty cool because the campus is pretty quiet, and yeah, it's just, it's a good thing to stay for those of you who are staying. Um, and going home can be a good thing too, and it's really interesting, I think, because when we go home, at least when I go home, still even now, we are reminded of different habits we have in our lives, right? So, for instance, um, it dawned on me at one point in my life that I somehow developed this habit when I went home of going straight to the refrigerator and opening it and just looking in it. <laughs> I'm not even joking. Because when I was in college, I used to go home and grocery shop at my house, you know, and like take whatever could get made in a hot pot or whatever you can do. And so I developed this habit of like checking what is in the fridge. And it was seriously three years out of college, and I came home from something, and I walked in my house, opened the fridge, and I was standing there, and I was like, what am I doing right now? <laughs> Going home reminds us of old habits that we have and maybe new habits that we've developed. We've been in the semester for six weeks now. I think that's right. Six, right? Six-ish. Um, and some of you, this is your first semester of college. Some of you, it's your fourth. Some of you, it's your sixth. I don't know if that's possible. Maybe. Um, and you're developing habits and ways of being. Old habits are hard to break. And new habits are hard to form. This summer, I wanted to develop a new habit of caring for my yard in the landscaping. And I wanted to develop a habit of taking care of a plant, which may seem really silly, but for um, plants are harder to take care of than you think, all right? So this is what I did. At the beginning of the summer, I, had, I, I have a front porch in my house, and I've got these hooks that you can hang hanging baskets on. And I was down at the farmer's market, and I saw just the most beautiful hanging basket. It, it's, it's a fuchsia, I learned, and it's just this overflowing, it's the flower that's pink and purple, and it's just like, it's gorgeous. So I was like, okay, I want these. I have three, I want three. I went up to the farmer work, worker, farmer market worker person, greenhouse person, and I was like, hey, tell me about this plant. Is it, is it pretty easy to care for? Oh, yeah, they say. It's hardy. They're like, because I was like, well, how do you water, how much do you water it? You know, what do you got to do? All these things you know, a little bit of water or a lot of water. It doesn't really matter. It's hardy. You really can't kill it. Well, <laughs> now this is, now, now mind you, I bought three. This is the one remaining. And so about one month after I bought them, they started to look like this. First one, and, and this is the tricky thing about plants. You get, it starts looking like this, and people tell you, well, you're either overwatering it or underwatering it. Well, you have different solutions. And so, <laughs> I kid you not, I spent like a, a, many sleepless nights wondering and Googling and wondering, trying to figure it out, because I really wanted to care for this. And I developed, I seriously, it became my habit. I would get up in the morning, it was part of my routine. I would go outside, water, apparently too much, my flowers. And I'll have you know, it's really hard to overwater hanging baskets, I learned. And my mom even told me who has the same ones and hers are still like flourishing, which is like salt in the wound a little bit. But this is the last one. It went from two, three to two to one. And the funny, I actually haven't done anything with this one for six weeks since school started. It's been on my back porch in their plant graveyard, my neighbors and I call it. And it's like trying its hardest to stay alive, probably more so now that I stopped doing things with it. So I'm not really good at plants, so I thought, okay, that became clear really early here in the summer. So I was like, you know what I can do? Weed. Anybody can weed, right? Like you just pull up the weeds. So I got this, this area in my, back, in my backyard, and it's one of those, there's a cute little picnic table, and, and it's got like the pebbles. You know what I mean? Like it's like not grass, it's not bark, it's pebbles. All there. And, but the weeds like come up, the weeds like come up through it. So I was like, you know what, I want this to be a nice area. So I would go and I would, and I would, you know, pick up the weeds and then, you know, it looked great for like two weeks and then they come back. And I was like, oh, maybe, 
okay, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna get serious about this because the thing about weeds, people who are smarter, like Doug, you need to like get the roots out, right? You can't just like take the top. But then I discovered that under the pebbles was this mesh netting that's supposed to keep the weeds out, and I was gonna have to dig that up. And, you know, it just became this project, and I was like, you know what? Forget it. I'm just gonna have a weedy picnic area, and so it became. So I'm not really good with weed plants. <laughs> or weeds, or maybe I'm great with weeds, they just grow wonderfully. <laughs> because I didn't want to do the work of getting the, getting the roots out of it. So I tried to develop these habits, and old habits and new habits um, are just, are, they're just really challenging. Last week, Friday, if you were here in chapel, Trigg spoke to us from Philippians, and he, Philippians chapter 2, verse 14 and 15 which says, do all things without murmuring and arguing so that you may be blameless and innocent, children of God, without blemish, who shine like stars in the world. And he gave this great message, and it was about looking at the stars and reminding us that we are called to look differently. And if you were on Wednesday, you heard even Tim Schoonveld mention how it even transformed his life as he went and walked his dog and looked at the stars and thought about murmuring and arguing. And if you're like me, you did think about it for a couple of days and were mindful about, oh, oh, murmuring and arguing, doing it. And then time goes on, a whole big week passes, and you kind of forget about it a little bit. And you're murmuring and arguing more, and you're not even really thinking about it. Old habits are hard to break. And new habits are hard to form. Particularly when we treat them, especially like thinking about murmuring and arguing, it's just, oh, I'm just going to stop doing that. Because here's the thing. It takes more than just stop and doing something, especially when it comes to um, behaviors and thought patterns. You need to replace them with something else. I mean, how many of you have ever in your life, I mean, I'm about to like become... Well, we'll see. Have you ever had a moment in your life where you've just tried to think of nothing? Has anybody tried to do that? You're like, you know, I'm going to sit here and I'm going to think about nothing. It doesn't work. You're always thinking about something. Your mind is always going, which is why simply saying, you know what, I'm going to stop doing this works for only a limited amount of time because you need to replace it and start something else. I want you guys to get out your pew Bibles right in front of you. I want you to turn to Philippians chapter 2. Page 954, for those of you who need some guidance, it helps. 954. Let's look at these verses, all right? Philippians chapter 2, verses 14 and 15, which I already says, Do all things without murmuring and arguing, so you may be blameless and innocent, children of God without blemish, in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation in which you shine like stars in the heaven. In verse 16, it is by your holding fast to the word of life that I can boast on the day of Christ that I did not run in vain or labor in vain. Here's an interesting thing. Some translators wish that verses 14 and 15 and 16 were left as one run-on sentence because they think that's a more accurate translation, which implies that as we read this, do all things without murmuring and arguing, so that you may be pure and blameless and you shine like stars. And it is by your holding fast to the word of life that you're able to do this. And I think what that indicates to us is the importance of making sure that we are grounded and rooted in the word of life. And I think that is the habit that needs to start to form in us that will help us as we want to not murmur in arguing. And why is that? It's because when we go to the word of life, we see who God is. We see who we are. And here's the thing about being murmurers and arguers. We come by it honestly. If you look, out, look through the Bible narrative, people of God have been murmuring and arguing for years. But here's the thing, this behavior is simply a symptom of the attitude of our heart. Often when we murmur or argue, particularly when we murmur, I think, it's because we have this sense that somehow we are underappreciated, or perhaps we've been overlooked. 
When we get into the word, we see that that is the farthest thing from the truth. You are appreciated. You are loved. You are looked upon by the creator of the universe. And that's the truth that we need to begin and continue to tell ourselves. That need in our heart. That's the root of what's going on inside of us. Old habits are hard to break, and new habits are hard to form. But I know from conversations with many of you that you want to break some old habits, that you want to form some new habits. And it's easy to get discouraged when you're able to murmur, not murmur for a week maybe, and realize that you're kind of stuck in the same old way again. But be encouraged by this. The Holy Spirit is indeed working in you. Because just the desire to begin to want to change these things indicates that the Spirit is working in you. That doesn't mean, however, that we don't need to do the work of getting the roots out of some of our old patterns and thoughts and ways of being. As we move into break, into fall break, my challenge for you over the next days is to get some rest, but also to really at some point sit and not try to think of nothing, but try to think of some of the habits that you've formed in your life, maybe even over just the past six weeks. Try to think of some of the habits you'd like to form in your life for the next six weeks. And then I challenge you to start to think about somebody who you can share that with, because it takes accountability and it takes community. We can't do this, nor are we intended to do this by ourselves. And then I want you to simply just pray to the Spirit to ask you for, to ask the Spirit to help you. Because I strongly believe that God is doing something new in each and every single person who is here this morning. Whether you sense it or not, it is happening. So as we move into this break, as a community of hope that will disperse for a little bit and come back next week. Let us move into this way of thinking together. We're going to close our time by praying, praying a prayer together. So let us pray this prayer. O oh Lord, take our minds and think through them. Take our lips and speak through them. Take our lives and live out your life. Take our hearts and set them on fire with love for thee. And guide us ever by thy Holy Spirit. Through Jesus Christ, Lord. Amen. Amen. Go in peace into fall break.